you are saying amen, say better amen. The strong man at the door that has vowed that it will not open for you. We fall down and die today. If you are saying amen, say better amen. In this service today, God will be connecting you to people that will open your doors. God will be connecting you to people that will be moving you forward. God will be connecting you to people that will lead to your enthronement. Somebody is coming out of prison today. If you are saying amen, say better amen. I'd like you to thank God. I appreciate him. Father, I'm grateful. Covenant keeper, I'm grateful. When you stretch forth your hand, no one can turn it back. I give you praise and I give you glory for this open door encounter. Blessed be your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you for today. You are settling someone's open door. I thank you because my name is included for the people that their doors will be opening. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Your family door will open. Your marital door will open. Any door you have been crying that they should open, hear me? The God of this commission is opening that door for you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is my new dawn era. What eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard shall be the order of the day in my life. Congratulations. Put those hands together for the Lord and please take your seat. God bless you. Still in our teaching series on my way to on my way to my promised land, part two. Bearing in mind that today is our covenant day of open doors and our focus is on the master key. Today, you will not just collect key, you will collect the master key. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. In the first service, we looked at revival, what a revival is, and we're made to understand that a revival is a move of the spirit that steers the spirit of man to commit to kingdom advancement endeavor. Only a revived man can partake of a revival. If your spirit is dead, you cannot flourish in a revival. Dead fish don't swim in water. They float on water. That's why in a revival, you can be floating when things are happening. You can be floating. Things are happening, you are floating. So for you to partake of the revival, you must be reawakened. We were once dead, but restored back in Christ. We were dead to sin, but made alive in God. So in this second service, we are continuing the series. A revival is a move of the spirit ordained to terminate all frustration and affliction of God's people. Thereby turning everyone into the envy of his world. That is why, hear this, you must be conscious where you go to. Revival don't happen anyhow and anywhere. There are places, there are centers of revival, the move of the Spirit. The move of God is not everywhere. It's in designated places, in certain places. You can't be 
in the center of a revival and things don't turn in your life. Everywhere a revival sparks off, there is what we call the manifest presence, the feelable presence, the touchable presence. When that presence is at work, you don't need pastor to lay hands on you. Whatever is troubling you leaves you. Whatever tied you, let you go. Why? They cannot withstand the presence, the manifest presence of God. I remember the testimony of a, a member. They were always going for midweek service. Before the children would sleep, they would sprinkle the blood on them. They had a house help who was assigned to submit that child to witchcraft code. But she never knew that there was a presence. Tell your neighbor there is a presence. So anytime she goes to see how she will collect the girl, an angel was there. If you touch her, I kill you. She tried it the first time. If you touch her, I will kill you. The third time, if you touch her, I will kill you. Her assignment was frustrated. Finally, she confessed. I was assigned to bring this one. But there was always someone that was always rising to stop me. I don't know what has been doing you. Today, they will let you go. The best place to be is where God is at work. The best place to be is where the hand of God is in operation. A praying church is a revived church. When the spirit of God is on the move, he moves things out of your way. He clears things out of your way. That's why you can't be in a revival and still carry loads of frustration. David said, when I came into this house, then I knew their end. Every time you are in a place where a revival is taking place, hear me, know there is an end to the oppression of your enemies. You can be frustrated spiritually. You can be afflicted spiritually. But not when you enter into his presence. The presence of God is a consuming fire. It swallows up affliction. It dries up the hand of the wicked. The bands of wickedness are destroyed. Prayer releases an unusual presence. The feelable presence of God. The touchable presence of God. So when you are in the presence of God, there is a guarantee. There is a guarantee that you are not going back the same way you came. No wonder he said, I've not said to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. Seek me in vain. Uh, in this service, hear this, affliction will go. I say again, affliction will go. I say to someone, affliction will go. Amen. Whatever power is behind the infirmity you are going through, they are letting you go today in the name of Jesus. Amen. How do I know? As soon as they hear of me, they shall submit themselves unto me, and the stranger shall fade away. Sickness is a stranger. Affliction is a stranger. It is not your heritage in Christ. No. It is not your portion. That's why you must not call it this my sickness. Who give you sickness? You were not redeemed again to carry another sickness again. 
No, it's not your sickness. Scripture says he himself took away. He took it away. If he took it, where did you buy it? So if he takes it away and there is anything troubling you, they must disappear from your body in the name of Jesus. Now hear this. Some people don't understand what frustration is. Frustration is anything that places a limitation on how far you can go. How far you can reach. What you can accomplish. It reduces your speed. It limits what you can get. It's a frustration. Anything that frustrates you from reaching, from handling what has been appointed to you, it is not of God. Scripture says he opened his hand wide and he satisfied the desire of every living thing. Permit me to let you know you are more than a living thing. You are the choosing of the Lord. Scripture says blessed is the man whom thou choosest. And Jesus said you have not chosen me but I have chosen you. So you are the choosing of the Lord. If you are the choosing of the Lord you are not permitted to be frustrated. You are not. I say you are not. Every frustration hanging upon your life will go today. Amen. Say a better amen. amen. So a revival center is a center for terminating affliction. Terminating sickness. That's why I hear this. No sickness can stand the presence of God. No affliction can survive the presence of God. What led thee, O thou see that thou fled it? Thou Jordan that thou was driven back. He said, Tremble thou at the presence of God. At the presence of the God of Jacob. Who turn it? Hear me? Anything that followed you here will die here. Yeah. That affliction will die here. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. So a revival center is a center of hope. It's a center of courage. You might have been down, but you are rising back. If you are saying amen, say better amen. He said, rejoice not over me, O enemy of my soul. He said, though I fall, I will rise again. I said, you are rising again. I said, you are rising again. If you are saying amen, say better amen. There's no problem in falling. There's only a problem in falling and not rising. That's where the problem is. But if you are falling, I want to let you know you will rise. Amen. I say you will rise. Amen. I say you will rise. Amen. Rejoice not over me, O enemy of my soul. Say, though I fall, I will rise. I will rise. Tell your neighbor you will rise. Is there hope for a tree if you be cut down? Yeah! At the scent of what I say, it shall spring forth. I say you are bouncing back. Yeah. I say you are bouncing back. Yeah. Whoever thought that you are finished will be surprised that you are bouncing back. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. You know, it is natural with man to conclude. But not knowing that you are about to start. Man can conclude. Man can say you don't finish. When men are saying your own don't finish, that is when God is opening a new chapter for you. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. I've heard of stories of people that were down to zero. But when they bounced back, they recovered all. You will recover all. Yeah. I say you will recover all. Yeah. Your family will recover all. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. John Massin said, winners don't quit and quitters don't win. If you refuse to quit, you will win. Tell your neighbor you will win. Don't give up when God has not given up. God didn't give up on you when you are a bloody sinner. He didn't give up on you. Scripture says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't give up. He still went far to bail you out. Rescue you. You will bounce back. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. 
hear me? Men can give up on you. Don't give up on yourself. That is your strongest point. Men can give up on you. Men can leave you alone. Men can change. But refuse to be who you are. Just be who you are. Maintain who you are. Men can give up on you, but don't give up on yourself. Scripture says concerning David, he cried until he couldn't have the energy to cry again. His people gave up on him. But scripture says he encouraged himself in the Lord. Every time a revival takes place, our courage is fired up. We are revived, restrengthened, revived, re energized. So a revival center is a refiring center. When you are refired, you can go far. If you are not refired, you will be benched, you'll be on the same spot. But when you are refired, you go far. You go far. Take the eagle for an example. An eagle bird can live up to 70 years. I didn't say 17 years. 70. A bird, eagle bird. Anytime an eagle mounts up to the mountain, it sheds off the feathers. It can stay without food. That's why it is different. After a while, the pores will begin to release oil. After a while, new wings will begin to spring out. The moment the wings spring out, you say, I am set for another height. No wonder scripture say, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. He said, they shall mount up with wings as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. You are likened to an eagle. A revival refires you to go further. To go higher. You will go higher. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Being in a revival is not enough. You must know what is in the revival for you. Like I said in the first service, interest steers up commitments. You can never be committed to what you are not interested in. You can never be committed to what you are not interested. Your interest is what steers up your commitment. What is your interest? What you can see that can be part as profit accrued to your person. Any businessman you see now, zealous after a business, giving himself sleepless nights, it is because he has seen what others cannot see. So he's giving himself. His passion is rooted in it. Why? Because he knows it cannot fail. He knows it cannot fail. So there is something in you in every revival. In this revival, it is an opportunity for God to launch us to our high place. Say to your neighbor, I'm going to my high place. Places are occupied, but each one determines the place he occupies. Let me say this. Your heart for God determines where he places you on the earth. Scripture says where a man's heart is, that's where his treasures are. Your heart for God. You, don't, you can't give yourself a place. That's why scripture says God sets down king and enthrones another. You can labor to be enthroned, but God is the one that enthrones you. You can work hard to succeed, but it's God that establishes you in success. So when you know that there is a place for you, not just a place, a high place. David said, God has brought me to my wealthy place. I don't know where you are looking for or what you are looking for. There is a place for you. I said there is a place for you. I said there is a place for you. Much more importantly, there is a place for you at the top. Say to your neighbor, I belong to the top. The bottom is too crowded. 
Say it loud that the bottom is too crowded. Eagles don't fly in company. Chickens flock around. Are you a chicken or you an eagle? Not before mouth. What makes a, an eagle an eagle is because of foresight. Say with me, foresight. foresight. Hear me? The farther you see, the farther you reach. The farther you see, the farther you go. An eagle can spot a bird nine miles away from wherever it is. Nine miles is not nine kilometers. So wherever an eagle is, he can see what others can see. The rule of placement is life is what we call visions and dreams. No wonder every outpouring of a revival gives birth to new dimensions of dreams and vision. Hear me? Vision for life is progressive. Even concerning Joseph. And Joseph dreamt yet another dream. If you are not dreaming progressively, you are not making progress. If your dream is not getting enlarged, you will die small. You will end up as a local champion. You dream yesterday, you will dream again today. The better your dream, the better your life. The more you dream, the farther you go. You know what? Dream brings us to the realms of possibilities. I like the way Dr. Paul Enenche puts it. He said, the realm you see determines the realm you live. Where do you see yourself? Even God said in Jeremiah chapter 1, is it verse 11 or 12? He said, Jeremiah, what's yes thou? He said, I see the rod of an almond tree. He said, thou has well seen. He said, for I will hasten my word to do what? Perform it. So what you see, determine what he will do. You see good, you steer up good. If you don't see yourself living a better life, you will never live a better life. God told Abraham, as far as your eyes can see. Your problem is not your location. Your problem is your vision. If you can see well, you will fare well. The best thing that can happen to anyone in a revival is for him to begin to see where. Tell your neighbor, see where. Yeah. Where you see yourself, determine where you find yourself. Where do you see yourself? Joseph said to his brother, Papa, I see you. I see you. All of you bowing to me. You see, Papa, you follow. Papa, you follow. This one was in that you follow. You bow, you follow, bow for me. So he saw his brothers bowing to him. Did they bow to him or not? Now, irrespective of the challenges, and thank God he didn't show him what he will meet on the way. If not, he would have changed his mind. Am I saying the truth? The dream never showed him they will throw him to the pit. The dream never showed him he will enter prison. The dream never showed him that Potiphar's wife will rape you. <laughs> because that was what Potiphar's wife was coming for. She was coming for a rape. You think it's only men that rape women? <laughs> Am I correct? He never showed him that. But the truth is that he could not let the dream go. 
the dream was too solid. The dream was intact. And he kept on protecting the dream until he finally arrived. And when he arrived, he said, you remember me? Now you throw me inside. You remember me? Huh? He said, I am that Joseph. It's like the ground should open and they, all of them enter inside. I am that Joseph you sold as a slave. You meant it for evil. But God turned it around for my deliverance. Now hear me. When God show you where you are going, expect obstacles. Expect people to fight you. Expect people around you to be used of the devil to fight where you are going. You meant it for evil. But God turn it around. No wonder Paul said, for we know. Tell your neighbor, for we know. For All things work together for good. So them that love God and accord according to his purpose. So no matter what anybody is doing to you now, they are helping you. I'm telling you, they are helping you. They are helping you mature. They are helping you to grow wiser. They are helping you to pray more. Challenges fuels potentials. Challenges increases sensitivity. Challenges places caution. So that you arrive at where God has in mind. So that you are not a victim of the trap of the enemy. So when things are happening, they are helping to mature you. They are helping you to build up more stamina to press on. So you don't give up because you want to get to your top. You keep pressing. You keep pressing. Scripture says concerning Jesus for the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross for the joy that was set before him. Hear me? There are things you must endure. You are going somewhere. And you must get there. How do I maximize the blessedness of the revival? Like we said in the first service, you must clean up. If you don't clean up, God will not show up. You must do what? Clean up. He said, consecrate yourself. For tomorrow, the Lord will do amazing things in your midst. The Lord will do amazing things in your midst. Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourself for tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders. Your consecration today qualifies you for a visitation tomorrow. Your consecration today qualifies you for a visitation tomorrow. So you are not getting yourself consecrated in vain. No. You are getting yourself prepared for a visitation. And you know, consecration is a choice. You can choose not to. And if you choose not to, you remain where you are. But if you choose to, you have chosen to be separate. So everyone defines his visitation. You define it. You define your visitation. You define your visitation. You will not miss your visitation. That amen is too weak. How do I maximize the blessedness of this revival? Number two, maintain a burning passion for souls. Let your passion for God never fade. Let your passion for souls never wind away. Keep desiring that someone must be rescued. Keep praying for someone's destiny to be intervened for. Keep praying that someone will be bailed out of challenges. Keep praying that God will turn somebody's sorrow into laughter. Keep praying that someone will be rescued from any deadly habits that is wasting the person's life away. And not only that, you are on the reach out. 
You want to reach out to give an invitation. You want to reach out to invite someone to church. Let me round up with this. Whatever you are doing, people are watching. Oh, you don't know. People are watching and they are taking notes. So you must be careful. Scripture says you are the epistles that men read. Whatever you are doing, don't forget. People are watching and they are taking notes. Is this person a believer? See the way they tear people. And they convince people to tear people. They are taking notes. They may not tell you, but they will answer you one day. I'm telling you, write it down. They are taking notes. Instead of bringing souls to the church, others are driving souls away from the church. Any person that is not increasing your spirituality is sent from the witchcraft coven against your life. Any person that is increasing your carnality has been ordained by hell to wipe you out. Check who you meet. Who you meet either takes you up or brings you down. Any person that is not increasing your spirituality is your enemy. Any person that is fueling your carnality is your chief pilot. And you are following the person. Are you bringing souls to the kingdom or you are increasing carnality so that the person can leave the church? Ask yourself that question. So for you to maximize the blessedness of revival, hear me? You are here as a savior. Tell your neighbor, I'm a savior. I'm a savior. Scripture says, out of Mount Zion, saviors shall arise. So we are duplicated saviors. Someone must be saved through you. Someone must be rescued through you. Someone must laugh through you. Someone must have hope for a better future through you. That's how it has been ordained by God. There was a sister that followed us when we moved down. Her testimony, her situation moved to me. The only child she had dead, which is killed the child. When she showed me the picture, I almost cried. I, I almost cried. I prayed with her, for her <laughs> from my spirit, not from my heart. Just on Thursday, she said, Daddy, I'm four months. Four months. <laughs> hear me and hear me well. Whatever you have lost, God will give you back. Yeah. I'm saying to someone, God will give it back to you. Yeah. I am the one that opens it and no man can close. God is a specialist in opening doors. He's a specialist in making ways where there are no ways. No matter the number of persons in church now, there is a door unique to you. There is a door particular to your life and your destiny. I want to say to you, God will open your door. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. There are keys that open doors but they cannot open other doors. That is why keys have different designs. Even car keys 
even if you call it automatic. They cannot all be programmed to open every other door. Am I correct? I want you to know something now. Just as car keys are programmed to open a particular car, that is how God has programmed your own open door to be unique to you. Do you agree with what I'm saying now? We are living in a time and season where are doors that open on their own are existing. There are magnetic doors now. I remember when we went to visit my master, Pastor Jeme. We were surprised we are at the gate. We blow on tire. So we call the little mommy that's going to be with the Lord now. She laughed. She said, ah, just wait. He will open it from the office. He controls the gate key from the office. He just pressed it. It's programmed in his phone. He will just program it. Bah. The thing will just roll. So when we entered, I was looking for the security man to shout at him. Mommy said, ah, there's no security man. The security man hold the thing for him for office. So from the office, is watching who goes to his gate. So he can just press, the thing will open. He can press, the thing will lock. When we were about to leave, we had to call him that we want to go. <laughs> you will get there. Yeah. It's not this push me, I push you gate. <laughs> It's not muzzle gate. It's button gate. Wait. God will open your door today. <laughs> you know there are some gates you need to eat starch before you can push those kind of gates. <laughs> if they, oh, okay, they don't have starch here. They have apple. Praise God. God is a specialist in opening doors without hand. I'm telling you, there are some hotels now, uh, if two meters before you are coming, the thing is open. You go back, it close again. <laughs> Life is getting better. But I want to say to someone here, every door that opens and every door that closes are controlled spiritually. What happens in the spirit determines what takes place in the physical. A business can be locked spiritually. A business can be also be open what? Spiritually. A womb can be locked spiritually. After a wedding, a witch, say with me, a witch, a concerned witch. Some people may be interested in your life not for good, but to work havoc. After the wedding, they were getting ready for the reception. She didn't understand the language. A relation came and said, eat this bread and close your stomach. You say, ah. Mm. She ate the bread. Barrenness started. That was a witchcraft be, uh, bread programmed to lock the womb. She fasted and prayed until she met a prophet that told her, you ate something from someone on your wedding day. Some people can just be, you think that they are dancing with you? <laughs> You don't know they are targeting your stomach. <laughs> Sisters, hear this now. If you are about to wed, make sure you have higher bodyguards. When you are dancing, if they want to drop them, drop them for granted. Yeah, drop them for Because you may think that they are coming to dance with you. They are targeting your stomach. Hey. Before you know what's happening, they say, we don't get time. 
Whoever has touched you with an evil hand, let your hand catch fire. Last year, that video went viral on Facebook. I don't know how many of us saw it. A lady they were doing a traditional marriage. Somebody was targeting her on the same thing. But hear me. Jesus said, I have the key of David. That key does not have duplicates. That key is in our hands. Doors can be locked up spiritually and doors can be opened spiritually. Elijah said, by my word. By my what? There shall be no rain for three and a half years. And there was no rain. Let me say something to you here now. This is the realm of man. Say with me, the realm of man. This is not the realm of spirits. That's why Jesus had to come bodily to fulfill God's plan. Hear this. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. He that is born of the spirit is what? Spirit. You have power of attorney to determine what happens here. That's why I say, what in so ever you bind here on earth is bound in heaven. And what is all that you lose here is also loose in heaven. I want you to bring you, I want you to come to this understanding. The master key we are talking about here now is the master key of faith. Mark chapter 9 and verse 23. Mark chapter 9 and verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, how many things? Some things. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. There is something unique about our belief. At resurrection, fear died, faith was born. The apostles, they were locked up in fear. Even when Mary Magdalene came and told them that Jesus has risen, they said, for we are get out. Jesus appeared himself. I am he that was dead. And now I live forevermore. Faith came. Courage came. They believed. And in Acts chapter 1 verse 3, he said he appeared unto them, convincing them with many infallible proofs Convincing them, I am alive. Fear not. When that belief came, things changed. What you believe determines what works. No one that scripture says, Blessed is she that believeth. For there shall be a performance. If thou canst believe, Jesus said. John 11 verse 40. Thou shalt see the glory. So what you believe determines the glory you see. I can see him walking in my favor. I can see him fighting in my battles. I can see him. Okay. He will do what he said. He will. What's yes thou? I can see him Walking in my favor, I can see him fighting in my battles. I can see him bringing in my miracles. He will do what he says he will do. So our belief attracts his hand. Who you believe determines the hand you attract. If thou canst believe, thou shalt see. So the master key of faith brings you to the realm of all things are possible. 
So if you have this master key, anything is possible. Hear me? I'm saying to someone here now, you don't need to relocate to Abuja for your life to be better. You can go to Abuja and turn to a lizard. No one that bishop said, a lizard in Nigeria cannot suddenly become an alligator in America. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You cannot just suddenly change or become an elephant. No. If thou canst believe all things, so your belief starts with you. Do you know that your heart is your open door? Oh, yes. It is in your heart you see your open doors. It is in your heart that you see nobody likes me. It is in your heart that you see nobody wants to marry me. It is in your heart that you see that everybody, you, uh, every person I meet wants to turn their back at me. It's a lie. You don't need to like me before I will like myself. I don't need you to like me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Huh? Like me for what? There is something in me that will attract you to me. Simple. You look for me, I look for you. You are not looking for me, I'm not looking for you. It's God principle. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you forsake him, he will also do what? Forsake you. He's not looking for you. You are the one that will look for him. There is nothing you, you have seen in any person that God did not design for you. Your own has also be prepared. Scripture says he has given to us all things that pertains to what? Life and godliness. There is nothing to envy anybody about. If somebody has bought a car, you will not end up trekking in your life. You too, you will buy a car. If you are saying amen, say better amen. If somebody has built a house, thank God for the person. When you will build your own, it will be more better. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Oh, you don't know before? That's how God arranged it. Celebrate with a person because your own is coming. Your door will open. You know, doors open face by face. There is a door that is opening for you now. Very soon, another door will open. If you are saying amen, say better amen. But in this service, God told me, with my tongue, I will open somebody's door. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Faith has its root in our hearts, but gain expression with our mouth. No wonder scripture says, with the heart man believeth, and with the mouth confession is made unto what? Salvation. No wonder Papa said, a close mouth is a close destiny. That's why you must be careful with your mouth. What you say with your mouth. You can lock your life. This country hard though. Nothing is in this laugh here. Oh. You may not see anything, but I will see something. Tell your neighbor I will see something. Do you know that some of the people that matter to you in destiny, you will meet them in laugh yeah. Oh, you don't know. I say you will meet them in laugh yeah. Hidden in the tongue is the power of life and death. If you have the right mouth, no devil can close your door. When I mean the right mouth, I mean the mouth that is not talking chaff. That is not talking nonsense. The, the mouth that is not given to daily gossip. The mouth that is not given to daily backbiting. The mouth that is not given to tearing down other people. You, 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 you tear somebody that you will never rise. It's a law of the spirit. 
Scripture says, let not an evil speaker be established. I don't need to be with you to know what you are saying. Be saying what you are saying. I'm going up. Tell your neighbor, I'm going up. I'm going up. What you are saying either brings you down or takes you up. So it's your choice. No wonder scripture told us, take in the shield of faith, whereby you shall be able to quench any devil that want to stop your door here. This is your trigger. Say with me, this is my trigger. Is my trigger. Your trigger is your tongue. I said to one, go and they go. And to another, come and they come. Hear me? You will not suffer any closed door again. So our closed door, our open door, is determining the way we speak. We having the same spirit of faith. We believe. Therefore, we speak. Second Corinthians 4 verse 13. We having the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believe. Therefore, have I spoken. We also believe. Therefore, we speak. What is not in your heart will never come out of your mouth. When men are saying there is a casting down, thou shalt say there is a lifting up. So your mouth is your open door. This land will bless me. I will go forward. I will see what others can't see. I will achieve what others can't achieve. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Your mouth. Tell your neighbor, your mouth. Your mouth is your ticket for your open door. Let me shock you, sisters. In 1997, either 97 or 98, I'm sure it was one of these two years, a sister had a fiery message like this. She has been believing God for her life partner. And scripture said, Seek ye out of the book of the law and read, None of these shall fail, neither shall any want her mates. For my mouth have commanded it, and my spirit shall do what? Gather them. She believed this scripture. Do you know what she did? She went back home that day like a mad woman. You know, every spiritual man is a madman. She went back home that day. My husband! Come forth! Is it normal? You need to do some abnormal things for things to take place. See now, someone is laughing at me. It's not social. It's not modern. Be doing social. See you, social. Before we know what's happening, that same month, the man had the voice as soon as they hear of me. She has opened her gate. The man came. He didn't come for boyfriend, girlfriend. He said, you are my wife. Go and pray and let me know. And make sure the prayer is not long. You know, that's one thing sisters pretend too much. 21 day fasting, they prayed. Three day fasting every month, they pray. <laughs> every day they pray. Now the brothers finally come, let me go and pray. Be praying. May he not change his mind before you finish the prayer. I didn't say you should not pray. Do you know why I say you should pray? When you know your team, say with me, my team, you will know. Through of us. When you, know, when you see your team, you will know. What is not your team, you will also know. Am I correct? So even if they wake you up in the dream, you can know this one is not my team. Somebody is angry with me. I know, I know somebody's angry with me now. 
That's why I am your pastor. I'm not to preach what you like, but what he says. Simple. Prayer is necessary. But what, when what belongs to you come, there is what we call inner witness. Am I correct? The spirit bears witness with our spirit. Let me close that chapter. I want to tell you, you can use your mouth and move your business. You can use your mouth and move your family forward. You can be speaking open doors for your children. Open doors for your career. Wives, you can say, my husband, you will prosper. You will go forward. Doors will open for you. Favor will meet you in your way. That is the rule of life. What you say determine what God will do. If you have not said it, God will never do it. Last year in the anniversary of uh, Pastor Ibio Media Church, he said, you can never see what you have never said. Start saying good things. Your mouth connects you to your open doors. Your mouth connects you to the helper of your open doors. Your mouth connects you to the helper of your progress. Start saying good things. The more bad things you say, both to yourself and against other people, increase your problem. The people you are speaking against, they are not going down because of what you are saying. They are going up. That's why your word affects you more. So your door can open. And knowing fully where that Jesus has put upon you the license. Say with me, license. I give unto you power. Not to travel. It's not limited to traveling serpents and scorpions, but to open the doors you want to see open. You will not miss it again. Amen. Rise up to your feet. Jesus said, what thing soever ye desire when ye pray. Believe that you receive them and you shall do what? Have them. <laughs> Before you pray, believe first. What did I say? Believe. What thing soever you desire when ye pray, believe and you shall have them. We are going to pray now. Studio, I don't know if you can help me type it. Every door connected to my new dawn. Every door connected to my new dawn. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you be open. Every door. Don't be afraid who is in charge of the door. Scripture, we are going to dwell on that in the third service. Scripture say, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. In heaven and on earth and beneath the earth. So whether there is a strong man now that has vowed that the door will not open for you, they will go down. I said they will go down. Every door connected to my new dawn in the name of Jesus, I command you be open. Lift up your voice and begin to pray right now. Every door, door of success, door of increase, door of marriages, door of flourishing, doors of progress, doors of favor, doors of supply. In the name of Jesus, be open. Be open. I command you, in the name of Jesus, every door connected to my new door, in the name of Jesus, be open. Leriakata, Eropaliadesata, Lesute, Genateko, Jeros Ikatata, every door connected. 
to my new dawn. Be open. Legarados iketerianas. Labero suzo nekete. That's name. That is above every day. Every dawn. Connected to my new dawn. Le katabraketo ziso ziya. Jeruda denle kote. Le kateria gadagada. Every door connected to my new door. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open. In the name of Jesus. Be open. Doors of success. Be open. Doors of spiritual growth. Be open. Doors of wisdom. Be open. Doors of exploit. Be open. Doors of signs and wonders. Be open. Doors of favor. Be open. Doors of help. Be open. Doors of progress. Be open. Lekato, Jesus Zekote, Ilado, Jekolata, Enkoprakete, Resozelia, Emprada, Le Shadaros, Enkarata, Lekoteri, Jeno Delicata. Be open. Doors of fulfillment, be open. Doors of progress, be open. Doors of glory, be open. Le ragada gada gada, shekelo pebredi aleta, lazando legedebo shagala gada gada, eroba reketese zidata. Le kata braga dorosh, every door. Connected to my new dawn. In the name of Jesus. I command you. Be open. Thank you father. In Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. We are going to take the part two. Which is dangerous. Any man or woman. Sponsoring arrow to close my door. Die by fire. Studio type it. Any man or woman. Sponsoring arrows to close my door. In the name of Jesus. Die by fire. Wherever they programmed your closed door. The person must die. Whoever has vowed that your door will not open will expire. Lift up your voice and begin to pray right now. Any man or woman sponsoring arrows to close my door, my family door, my wife door, my children door, die by fire! Le rakata, e soze neketeria, jeklopebredi, e ruza nekoteriata. Any man or woman sponsoring arrows so close my door in the name of Jesus. Die by fire. La bode no rush. Eko teko. Jeklo pepe riata. Ezudidi. Ero periado. Jeklo ba. Lazada. Razada. 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 Eleke dogo 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 do. Raga daga 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 da. Jeklo dogo brega daga 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 da. Whoever. Is sponsoring arrows to close my door. Die by fire in the name of Jesus. Le rambalabosh, le rambalabosh, zegolaga laga laga das. Zegolaga dogo dogo dos. Le riakata de dus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. All eyes close. All eyes bow. You are here. You are not born again. 
Jesus said, if thou open, I will come and dwell. Accepting Jesus Christ is the beginning of your open doors. Wherever you are right now, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, God bless you. Inside and outside, put your hands together for Jesus. Carry your bag and your Bible and come quickly. Put those hands together for Jesus. God bless you. Come, come, come. God bless you. Your door has opened. Come. God bless you. Come. Your door has opened. Come. Come. Put those hands together for Jesus. God bless you. Come quickly. Don't stop clapping for them. Clap some more. Clap some more. Clap some more. Come and build your If you are coming, come quickly. God bless you. This is the best decision anybody can make. Joining them, join quickly. Don't hesitate. Don't postpone it. Any voice that is telling you don't go is Satan. Any voice telling you don't go is Satan. Unto them that come unto you, shall they in no wise cast out. They have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. I stand as your servant decreeing today that the guilt of their past, they are rolled away. Every cause, every accusation, by the authority in the name of Jesus, the yoke is destroyed. If you are saying amen, say it better, amen. I decree no devil will close your door. In Jesus' name we pray. As this oil come upon you, I say with authority, that door is open. The door of your family is open. In the name of Jesus Christ. The door of your children, they are open. The door of your career is open. The door of your business is open. The door of your marriage is open. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Put your hands together for Jesus for them. Just turn. Follow this man right now. Follow this man. Turn. Follow this man. Everybody lift up your hand before the Lord. I pray for you today. By the prophetic grace backing this commission, I decree your doors open. I decree your family doors open. I decree your career doors open. I decree your marital doors open. I decree your business doors open. The strong man that vowed that your door will not open. Fall down and die. 48 hours from now, the witch or the wizard, the occultic man resisting your open door, will swell up and die. Will swell up and die. Will swell up and die. He said, I am the one that make it a way where there is no way. I pray for you. They have told you it is not possible. By it, in the name of Jesus Christ, that door you desire, I declare them open. That door you desire for your family, I declare them open. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Wave your hand unto God and give him all the glory.